Oh, no. The best part about being a girl is making sure I don't have to do any of this. <laughs> I can't even watch that. It's about the community. You can't have them walk by. My name is Anthony Rose, and I own Rose and Sons, Big Crow, and Fat Passion, all on DuPont Street in Toronto. Fat Passion is like a combination of Middle Eastern, Israeli, and, and Jewish food. And it just happened really well and just came together quickly, which is perfect. It is that kind of Eastern European influence with the old school Israeli as well. And that's what we've created here, but in a very simple, kind of backcountry, cottagey type of feel. Hands, please. Right now, I'm going to put together a salad team platter. We have a, a little bit of a caraway cabbage slaw. We have a spicy Moroccan-style carrot salad. We got some dill cucumbers, some beetroots and labanay, top with a little bit of dried oregano. We got some heavily charred eggplant mixed up with some tahina, some garlic first tomatoes and whatnot, some uh, rapini tabbouleh, so then we finish this because you gotta put olive oil everywhere, see that? It's super healthy. Most of it's raw. Like if it's cooked at all, it's cooked in vinegar. You know, it, it, it's just a beautiful, fresh way to start your meal. The first time I met Anthony was at the Drake Hotel and he kind of opened my eyes to things, should just be good. You know, uh, and it was the first chef I'd ever worked for that had really shown me that food can be good. We were working with the best products, the same products we work with at every restaurant, every good restaurant in the city, but we didn't have to make them fussy and froofy and whatever. It was just good, bold food on a fucking plate, right? We're going to do a whole head of roasted cauliflower. We give them a par boil, then we cut them open just so we can get the heat inside a little bit better. We pre roast them. So we just give them a little extra oil, kind of get that caramelization going a little bit more. I kind of thought Anthony was a bit insane when uh, he came to me and like we were hashing out the original menu together. He's like, oh, we're gonna do a whole head of cauliflower. And I was like, I'm gonna come to you tomorrow with like 15 ideas of how we can serve cauliflower. So I did, and it took about five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, 25 tries to actually nail that dish down. So now we pulled it out, we got a good amount of that caramelization on there, which is tasty. We also, through the magic of television, slipped some halloumi cheese in there. Started out with some of our tahina dressing, some of our shkug. Shkug's like a, an herby hot sauce. A little bit of pomegranate. Some of that sweetness, tartness, a little extra crunch. And then we finish it off with some pine nuts. The cauliflower is like absolutely our signature dish. Everybody orders it. That's our roasted cauliflower dish. It's a cool dish and it's gorgeous at the table because it comes whole and it's got a knife in it and you can share it. Originally when we opened up, we were just serving a whole cauliflower, but people weren't eating the whole thing. So now we serve a half cauliflower as well. I order like three cases of cauliflower a day. It's like 36 eggs. It doesn't even make sense. Kev's a smart guy. I know Kev for years. He was worked for me as a cook and a sous chef at the Drake Hotel. You know, he's such a great leader and he's created such amazing community there. So it's fantastic. So we're gonna do our chopped liver dish. It's loosely loosely based on a restaurant in New York called Sammy's Romanian. Sammy's is old school Romanian steakhouse, Lower East Side. We asked them, like, can we do this in Toronto? Like, absolutely. So we have uh, the chopped chicken liver, we have some grated radish, we have some hard boiled eggs, some caramelized onion, and a whole shit ton of ribbons, which is like crispy chicken skins. Nice. And the dressing, of course, we got the schmaltz. It's a bunch of chicken fat. Oh, it comes with a bit of that grilled challah bread. Eat here every day and you will live forever. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. Yeah, the guy in the Globe Mail had a borderline sexual experience with it the other week, so. Here you go, guys. Put that in the middle for you and help yourselves. We got a little bit of beetroot horseradish on the side, right? So a little acidity, a little spice, it'll kind of cut right through all that fatty goodness for you. 
it's, it's fatty, it's rich. It's kind of a little bit opposite of everything else that we do because it is so animal fatty and rich. I mean, we have both ends of the spectrum in the restaurant. We have like vegetables and fresh and this, that, and then we have this chopped liver dish. And that's where a lot of the food comes from and some of the feeling that we're trying to get. Not only at Fat Pasha, but at all the restaurants. This is where we are and hopefully this is where we keep going. It's just forward and better and more veggie and yeah, just take over DuPont first and then the city. After we were done making dinner for everybody, we finally got a chance to all go out together, which is something we haven't had a chance to do yet. All right, have a good night, guys. I'll see you later at the Big Crow. Woo! We're going to Rosen Sons. We gotta pick up Chris Sandy Sanderson. He's like the funniest guy on the face of the planet, and he's my boss. He's the father of Rosen Sons. Yeah, he's my daddy. All right. Yeah. This is going to be really good. We're going to Rodney's Oyster House right now. It's down on King Street. Rodney's is one of my favorite restaurants in town. They've got an amazing selection of oysters, gorgeous lobster, crabs. Love oysters, but I also love that oyster house feeling. It's good food, it's fantastic people with a very cool kind of East Coast vibe. Rodney's like a legend in the city and is kids now run the joint. My name is Eamon Clark from Rodney's Oyster House. 30 years ago, my father came to Toronto. What happened is his father would send him oysters on the back of a potato truck from PEI, where he's from. And he would then give these oysters out to people around the city. Eventually, he started up Rodney's Oyster House. To see them shuck oysters and to see kind of like that old school mentality of even the food, like they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're just making good food. And it's the oyster first. Then it's the customer, and then we worry about everything else after, you know? All right, guys. Yeah. We got a couple dozen oysters here. Yay! So we did a little selection, uh, East Coast oysters. That's uh, Onset Bay, Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Um, tray raised oyster, uh, pretty typical kind of oyster that comes out of there, three and a half inches long. Queen is uh, our middle grade, uh, Prince, Queen, and Kings, small, medium, and large. Oh, look at that crap! So, Dungeness crab, two and a half pound, queen shredder line. Squeeze his belly. Yeah, but don't squeeze it too hard. Yeah, just, you know. Don't pull his tail out. Oh, uh, <laughs> they got weird ass. Did anyone want to hurt him? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. I like oh, to make my Yeah. Guys, good help to Rodney's. To Rodney's. Rodney's to the Holy Trinity. It has me tartar sauce. That's just a little pink. Oh. That's just a little pink. So fucking good, man. How you doing? Oh, not good. They're not too salty either. The mussels were so good, and Sandy shows that thing with the, the other mussel shell. This <laughs> turns into a tongue after you eat it. So you go in, you pick up your mussel, and you eat it. You gotta stack the mussel shells like so. Keep it fucking super neat. I'd never seen that before. So right. growing up, actually, my parents would carry like a whole purse of these with them no. just for me because I would get so dirty all the time. I didn't have that. Yeah, oh, a little bit good. of this action. <laughs> oh, I've been uh, I've been coming forever and ever and ever. I fucking uh, love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went right down my throat. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Did somebody just fart? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Actually, at one point, I farted. That was very, very, very awkward. Now let's talk about it. It was very involuntary. I didn't even feel it coming. You can ask my wife. It's a phenomenon. You know, I came out here Something expecting like a very, <laughs> very refined type of evening. Farting at church. <laughs> Love Rodney's. We'll always go there. Is it Northwood? This is my local. It's just like a bar in my hood. That is cool shit. That's where we're going. Anthony knows Northwood very well. Um, it was my first time, but it turns out that I went to high school with the owner, a guy named Pope. Super cool guy. Hi, how are you? Northwood's kind of sort of like a local to me. 
It's two blocks from my house. I don't drink a lot of cocktails, but I love the feel of the place. We were there last night on a Tuesday and they were packed. Some of it will be ready. The fucking shoulders are like this big. Have a taste, it's really pretty. Oh, I can't wait till we do all the shots. Hi, Sandy. Oh, Captain. They have good bourbon and good cocktails and they're just really smart. And it's also in a neighborhood that needs it too. My name. Mystery meat to go consume. Yeah, mystery meat. Sandy's mystery meat in my mouth. Come on in. Hey. We came back to Big Crow for the party afterwards, and it was the first time that the staff from all restaurants were together in one place. We came in, there was beer everywhere. I knew everybody in the room. I felt cool. I never go anywhere and know everyone. Sandy got in really early yesterday morning and he had a brisket and a pork shoulder that had been marinating for a couple days and some barbecue spices, really, really simple. So basically all we've done with this is just salted it. We put our barbecue spice on it. Let it sit for about a couple days. Smoked it for about 10 hours. Crushed it in the oven just to finish it off, get it all super sexy and soft. Brisket's spot on. I don't know. I love the chopped brisket. So good. And then uh, we just chop it up, mix it with a little bit of Carolina sauce, salt and pepper, put it out, grill some tortillas, and we're fucking ready to go. I love the combination of the American South with the smoke and the uh, Mexican flavors together like that. It just works. It's uh, our vision of growing up at the cottage in Algonquin Park and cooking on an open flame. A little bit of smoke, a lot of fire, and just good music and good food and good times. Thank you for your support and your guidance and your help and everything. Good health, guys. It's a, it's a beautiful feeling. I just like, always love being here.